Avengers progression and impact on the monster truck industry is a story unlike any other on the circuit. From a small and relatively unknown independent to becoming not just a two-time Monster Jam world champion, but also leading to the creation of arguably one of the most impressive and most successful independently owned Monster Truck teams of all time. Today, we are going to delve into the thrilling history of one of the most exciting Monster Trucks. This is the evolution of Avenger. Our story begins in 1996, where a man by the name of Jim Kohler would begin building the very first Avenger monster truck. Jim's initial inspiration came from witnessing Bigfoot's famous 1983 car crush in the Pontiac Silverdome. Jim saw the monster trucks of the 80s and 90s and felt that he was up for the challenge of building his own with the help of a friend named Chris Bergeron. After testing the truck in late 1996, the truck would officially debut a year later in 1997. The body was a 1991 Chevy S10, featuring a dark green scheme with bright yellow flames adorning the side of the truck and cyan rims to finish the truck's iconic look. Interestingly, it wasn't the first truck named Avenger that ran on the circuit during that time. An industry veteran from Brentwood, Tennessee by the name of Alan Pizzo had a teammate truck to Predator, also named Avenger. Ironically enough, both Kohler's and Pizzo's Avengers once even competed at the same event together. The origin behind Jim Kohler's Avenger name actually comes from the name of his father's drag racing car. In respect of this fact, Pizzo would let Kohler use the name instead from then on, and the truck was then converted to Carnivore. Jim Kohler would have Avenger compete in numerous Monster Jam events in 1998, though never made it to television during the year. That was until 1999 when Kohler would be invited to compete at the Monster Jam World Finals, which coincidentally was also the first time Avenger received major television exposure. The World Finals would be a very prominent and important part of his career, even if his appearance wasn't memorable. Starting from that event onwards, Jim Collar and Avenger would to this day be the only truck and driver to ever compete in each and every Monster Jam World Finals. Little did anyone know that the upcoming new millennium would single-handedly help catapult Cola into the spotlight and make him so well known and so beloved as he is and his truck are now. In 2000, Jim continued running mostly for Monster Jam and began receiving major television exposure. The 2000 televised season was notable for many reasons, because it featured less of the more well-known, established and dominant independent teams and names from before, such as Monster Patrol, Carolina Crusher, Barefoot, and others with smaller teams receiving more exposure in their place, like Alan Pizzo's Predator, John C. Sock's Sudden Impact, Jim Jack's Reptoid, and well, Jim Kohler's Avenger. Avenger quickly became one of the star trucks in Monster Jam after having previously been an obscure underdog due to the absence of those previously mentioned trucks, and his crash from New Orleans of that year quickly helped establish him as someone to pay attention to. Following said crash, Avenger's body shifted to a much newer version of the S10, which became the team's most frequently used body as time went on. During this time, the sport's focus was beginning to shift toward freestyle as its main attraction, having previously been a small encore performance for its fans in attendance, with Monster Jam officially turning it into a competition. Cola had never been confident in his racing abilities, so he saw freestyle as the area where he could not only have the most fun, but where Avenger could shine the most, and he was correct. 
By 2001, Avenger had begun to hit its stride and Cola's personality had shifted into what is now known as Mr. Excitement, which many of you have grown up enjoying. With this change in attitude came a similar change in attitude when behind the wheel. Cola was in the minority of drivers that, during that time, had openly embraced and even preferred the chaotic and destructive nature that freestyle brought to the sport, and his driving reflected it. Jim had become much more aggressive when driving a venture and began pushing his truck well past its limits in order to perform well. With his freestyle at the 2001 World Finals being what would certify him as a monster truck star. Cola had also begun competing in special events, jamboree events, as well as pro MT races, proving that despite his preference for freestyle, Jim was ready and willing to enter the most fiercely competitive racing leagues with Avenger. Along with the change in personality came the formation of Team Scream Racing, with a new teammate truck by the name of Brutus debuting in the summer of 2001. In 2002, Avenger would debut the now iconic 1957 Chevy Bel Air body that almost all Avengers have been known by. The truck continued to gain notoriety and a fan base due to Cola's eccentric personality and his exciting performances at Monster Jam events despite 2002's World Finals seeing him roll over early in freestyle. 2003 would be a landmark year for Avenger. By this time, the truck was now seven years old with six years of competition under its belt. Despite the 2003 Monster Jam season not being televised at all, Cola was still a crowd favorite wherever he went, but few could have predicted the magic that he would have at the 2003 Monster Jam World Finals. By this time, Cola's World Finals appearances were exciting at best and disappointing at worst, but World Finals 4 helped catapult his career even more so than when he was first shown on television. Jim Cola would lay down an excellent and all-out chaotic freestyle run that saw him earn the Freestyle World Championship. This was the first time an independently owned truck would win a Monster Jam World Championship in racing or freestyle. Cola had entered the world of monster trucks as a hobbyist, and within a decade was a world champion. In 2004, Avenger had much to prove and a world championship to defend. With Jim being the reigning world freestyle champion, classed alongside the names like Anderson and Mentz, it placed a lot of newfound pressure on Jim's shoulders. He had a reputation to live up to, and live up to it he did, continuing to display his bombastic personality and drive Avenger harder than ever before. That same year, Jim Kohler would win his very first televised Monster Jam event in Indianapolis that year, recreating the magic of his championship winning run from the year prior and having one of the best freestyles of the season. The 2004 Monster Jam World Final saw Cola start a tradition that has been continued to this very day. The usual dark shade of green with the yellow flames was now replaced with a bright shade of orange and blue and green flames almost as if they were inverted. Despite the awesome new scheme, Avenger unfortunately didn't live up to the moniker that he had been displaying all season breaking immediately in freestyle, but Jim still had his pride and would be back to fight another day. The Orange Buddy would be run again later that year for the 2004 Monster Mash event in Joliet, Illinois, put on by Route 66 Raceway. That same year, Avengers teammate Brutus would debut its iconic concept body, replacing the S10 from before, which the truck has run ever since. In 2005, Cola would once again be invited back to compete at the Monster Jam World Finals. Interestingly, his new scheme was a mashup of both his regular scheme and last year's orange body. 
but the split paint scheme wasn't the only talking point of the event. It was Jim Cola jumping into the water fountain that became a memorable moment for fans in attendance. This act of physical comedy became a tradition that has continued in each and every Monster Jam World Final since, in some form or fashion. In 2006, Jim was still driving Avenger as aggressive as ever, and was able to compete in the final Monster Jam event to take place in the Pontiac Silverdome, the venue that sparked his love for monster trucks, as well as his first major event to compete in. In terms of new schemes for World Finals, 2006 saw the debut of the famous Chrome Avenger. In a similar fashion to his crash from New Orleans of 2000, Cola's crash at World Final 7 in 2006 was so monumental that it was featured on the cover art for that year's World Finals DVD. 2007 saw Avenger debut a new variation of the pre-existing body at World Finals, that being the same design with a lighter green tint. In 2008, Jim Kohler would win yet another televised Monster Jam event, this time being in Detroit, Michigan, not far from Pontiac. 2008's World Finals saw the addition of the bright neon green body, again similar to the regular design that Jim was running during the year. Avengers performances at the 2005 World Finals through to 2008 World Finals events were memorable yet brief, with little indication that Jim would win another World Championship. The summer of 2008 saw a big change in pace for Avenger and Team Scream Racing. By then, Avenger was over 10 years old and despite being a great performer, Jim's truck was what failed him most of the time. It was clear that the team needed trucks that were both capable and durable, because the ones they had were frequently falling apart. In the world of monster trucks, where trucks are always evolving, becoming stronger, getting faster and more technologically advanced, Kohler debuted a brand new Avenger chassis, dubbed Avenger 2. An early version of this chassis had debuted the year prior for Bob Robbins' Aftershock, and it was time for Avenger to utilize this design as well. Alongside the addition of Avenger 2 was the second chassis for Brutus, also dubbed Brutus 2. From there, the original two trucks would be repurposed with Team Scream's other identities. Spike and Wrecking Crew had debuted in 2005 for a special event show in the RCA Dome, but with no full-time chassis for them to be run on, they had only been running at select shows. Therefore, Avenger 1 would be repurposed as Wrecking Crew, and Brutus 1 would be repurposed as Spike. Avenger 2 has been hailed as one of the most impressive trucks on the circuit, because despite being built in 2008, to this day, the truck is still competitive despite the advanced age of the truck. Not only that, it's also incredibly durable, having sustained numerous crashes that, for other trucks, might spill the end and subsequent retirement of said chassis. With the more durable design, it was reflected yet again in Kohler's driving style. He would take even bigger risks in freestyle, trying to please the fans with his jaw-dropping performances. Once again, the team had a memorable showing at the Route 66 Raceway Monster Mash in Joliet, Illinois that same year, where not only were the two new trucks competing, but perhaps the highlight of the event was Jim Kohler's brother, Steve Kohler, driving Avenger 1 as Masher where he would have an incredible freestyle that saw him plow through a double-wide trailer and proving that he had what it took to be a star performer as well. Kohler's 2009 season would start out strong and continue to get better and better. At this season opener in Minneapolis, he won freestyle, and later that year in St. Louis, he won freestyle again. With him being invited yet again to the World Finals, his newest scheme would be the now beloved Scuba Avenger. The design was probably the most unique of the Avengers since its very first, 
because it's straight away from being the usual recolor, this time with the creative design of an underwater Avenger. Even the skull had a scuba mask, hence the design's name. Later that year in November, Monster Truck Promotions Australia would host the second annual South Pacific Monster Truck World Finals, which featured a mixture of Australian monster trucks and drivers and more established American drivers like Paul Schaefer, Craig Christensen and Dan Patrick. This event became notable for featuring the debut of what has been nicknamed as the Aussie Avenger, a recreation of Avenger that ran a Chevrolet Nomad body with a similar design to what was run in the United States. Cola would drive the truck in its debut and would win the Freestyle Championship in appropriate fashion. In 2010, not much had drastically changed for Avenger or Team Screen Racing in general. But by this point, it was clear that the team was firing on all cylinders and had established themselves as one of the top independent teams in the sport, a distinction that they hold to this day. That year in Detroit, the entire team competed together on television in what ended up being a strong showcase. This was the first time all four of Team Scream's trucks competed in a Monster Jam event together at once. Jim Kohler had also had an incredible freestyle victory at the Minneapolis Metrodome that same year, in which he would also win the Freestyle of the Year award. For the World Finals, another simple yet iconic design was introduced, the Black Rat Rod Avenger. Many hail this Avenger to be one of its best, simply because of its gothic colour scheme and sleek looks. A matte black finish with bright white flames with red tips, the truck just screamed perfection, and Cola performed quite well at the event, ending a slump that he had been in at the World Finals. For the South Pacific World Finals 3, Aussie Avenger would return with Cola once again behind the wheel, and he would defend his Freestyle Championship. Little did he know that this may have been a sign of things to come the following year. 2011 was another landmark year for Team Scream. By this point in time, the team had expanded to such a degree that once again, the entire team could compete at a single show or compete in various stadiums and arenas for various tours across the United States and Canada. The entire team would also embark on one of their first West Coast tours for Monster Jam, going to cities such as Anaheim and San Diego. Avenger received an updated paint scheme that was more akin to the style of the previous World Finals bodies, using a bigger font, a more vibrant colour of green on the truck, and the flames also being quite bigger. Once again, Avenger debuted a new scheme at the World Finals, and that was the first candy apple red design that changed up the look of the truck once again. However, that wasn't the only talking point of the event, as Jim Collar would lay down a freestyle run that was set to take the World Freestyle Championship for a second time. He would end up doing so by winning the tiebreaker against Cam McQueen to secure his second ever World Freestyle Championship. A feat that to this day only Tom Mance and Adam Anderson have been able to pull off. This helped prove that the Freestyle Championship in 2003 was not a fluke, as Jim proved that he still had what it took to win on the biggest stage. Over in Australia, Aussie Avenger was now running more commonly, however not with Cola behind the wheel. Instead, Montana native Corey Clark and the homegrown Australian kid, Jay Featherby, drove the truck for the rest of the year at various events. The South Pacific World Finals had ceased operating, and in 2012, the Australian Avenger was retired and converted into the Tassie Devil truck. From 2012 to 2014, nothing much again had changed for Avenger. The team was still performing at a very high level and Monster Jam was its main stage. There were three brand new world final schemes, a yellow Avenger that saw a caricature of Jim Collar on the roof holding his two world championships, 
for the year of 2012, a beautiful dark red Avenger for 2013, and a flashy purple Avenger for 2014. Cola would perform relatively well at these events, having memorable freestyle runs and crazy crashes, especially for 2013 and 2014. By this time, another big stage that Jim Cola had proven himself to be one of the star performers on was the Monster Spectacular event in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Team Scream had been competing at these events since the early 2000s, and by the mid-2010s, had proven time and time again to be one of the top competitors at these biannual events. In 2015, Jim Kohler in Avenger and Steve Kohler in Wrecking Crew were both invited to compete in the first Monster Jam Fox Sports 1 Championship Series. This new and exciting series was the first time since the early 2000s that a point series had been implemented by Monster Jam. The tour had an all-star lineup that featured the best talent Monster Jam has had to offer. The only issue was, due to the rules of the series being that all trucks can only earn points if they win a competition, that Cola, like many other drivers, earned no points during the series. Cola was not upset by this, in fact, it seemed quite the opposite. It was joked about in interviews. Are you ever going to score any points? <laughs> That's an awesome question! And even prompted him to run the iconic rocking zero point sticker on the top of the truck. Despite the lackluster performance points wise in the series, he still managed to have memorable moments throughout and made it into the world finals once again, debuting the sleek white Avenger. Later that year in July, Team Scream Racing introduced a new identity called Rage with Corey Rommel behind the wheel. Rommel has been quite a pivotal figure for Team Scream Racing, as not only is he one of their best drivers, he has also helped build numerous chassis that the team still uses to this day, proving to be even stronger than those previous. The truck debuted in Mount Pleasant for Monster Truck Throwdown on Brutus 1. In 2016, Cola was once again invited to compete in the 2016 edition of the FS1 Championship Series. This time, he was joined by Brad Allen, who had taken over Brutus instead of Steve Cola in Wrecking Crew. In a stark contrast to the previous year, Cola would actually earn points, three to be exact, with his teammate Brad Allen also getting himself a singular point. With the obstacle course becoming the donut competition, this easily played into Cola's strong suits and helped him earn points in that competition. That year's World Finals body was another iconic scheme, that being the Junkyard Avenger. And in all honesty, it's one of my least favorite Avengers. Yes, yes, I, I, I know. I hate the Junkyard Avenger. Cancel me now. Just, I, I hate it. I'm sorry. I can't do anything about it. In all seriousness though, and putting aside my opinions, this has become one of the most beloved Avengers to most fans, so it deserves to be remembered fondly. 2017 was another monumental year for Avenger. The year marked the 20th anniversary of competition for the truck, and Cola wanted to celebrate this achievement. That's why for the first time since 2001, Avenger would ditch the iconic 1957 Chevy Bel Air body to return to the more nostalgic Chevy S10 body style the truck used to be known for. He would compete in the FS1 East Championship Series and with the new point system, saw him play 6th out of the 14 other trucks, also earning a win at the Sunday San Antonio show in freestyle. The truck was still run on Avenger 2, However, that would change at that year's Monster Jam World Finals. Along with the brand new body style, came a brand new chassis. This was a CRC chassis, also dubbed as Avenger 3. It was built by Corey Rummel, and the truck was a lot different to Avenger 2 in many ways. Mainly being a lot heavier compared to the other trucks, but like Avenger 2, could sustain a tremendous beating due to its design. 
the design of which still harkened back to the days of the truck's beginnings with a dark metallic green paint and new graphics that truly made this one of the best Avengers to date. The new chassis proved to be very fruitful for Cola as he was consistently fast that night making it all the way to the semi-finals, a career best for him, and also finishing third in freestyle, with some believing that he should have won the whole freestyle competition in general. Regardless, this new Avenger was a perfect fit. 2018 marked the first full Monster Jam season for Avenger 3 as he competed on Stadia Championship Series 1 and finished in 8th place. The truck would, interestingly enough, not only bring back the older small logo body style for Avenger, but also adopted the now famous beadlock inserts and upwards facing mufflers. This not only gives the truck a distinct and mean look, but a distinct sound. In a world where most trucks that have mufflers sound almost identical to one another, Cole's unique setup helps him stand out from the rest of the crowd, while still proving to be efficient performance-wise. 2018's World Finals design became notable for once again pushing the norm for what an Avenger design could look like. That came in the form of the short-lived yet incredibly beloved Chevy Nomad body. With him unfortunately rolling over after only one hit in freestyle, the body has not been seen in any form since. In 2019, Avenger would compete on Stadium Championship Series 1, again finishing 8th. The World Finals for Cola this year would prove to be important, as Avenger would be one of the original 8 competitors to compete in the first ever High Jump World Championship. A competition of which Cola would excel at, considering from 2012 to 2017, he would win the Monster Jam Extreme Air of the Year award for those years. Again, with another new World Finals comes a new Avenger design. That design would be the steps towing red, white, and blue Avenger. The truck featured a double-sided design, one with red and white being the primary colors and the other side being blue. Unfortunately, Cola would not win high jump, or really come anywhere close, and his freestyle run was lackluster, although he seemed to have truck issues. Jumping back a few years for the Wildwood Monsters on the Beach shows from 2015 to 2019, excluding 2017, the Blue Scuba Avenger was brought back, although with some notable design changes. The shade of blue was much darker and other smaller details were changed, giving the truck a more mean and cleaner look. However, World Finals 20's red, white and blue scheme wasn't the only new Avenger scheme that would debut that year. As for the inaugural Monster Jam All-Star Challenge in 2019, Cole would introduce the fans to Avenger Fire, a design representing the team's element of which he was drafted to. Team Fire. Interestingly enough, Cola ended up being the most pivotal driver of the whole weekend for his team. He earned the most amount of points out of anyone on Team Fire, achieving that by being eliminated in round 2 of racing, both on Friday night and Saturday night, finishing 2nd in the best trick competition and finishing 6th in freestyle with one of the most brutal crashes of all time. Avenger would go on to be run again at the December Minneapolis show that same year. In 2020, he would compete on Stadium Championship Series Red. In the opening round in Anaheim, he would take home the Skills Challenge win as well as the overall Events Championship, putting him at the top of the standings for at least the first weekend. However, in addition to not returning to the winner's circle after Anaheim that year, Monster Jam had ceased running in March due to the pandemic. In Monster Jam's return show in Arlington, Texas in October that same year, 
his son Chris Cola would make his Monster Jam debut. Chris was supposed to make his debut behind the wheel of Axe in one of the summer shows for Monster Jam, but with the pandemic happening, Chris's debut was pushed further until Arlington. Interestingly, the show did not feature Jim Cola and Avenger in any capacity, only his son behind the wheel of Axe and Corey Rummel in Rage. In late 2020, Monster Jam announced their semi-return to a regular style season, obviously conforming to the new, unpredictable and still ongoing restrictions caused by the pandemic. This was in the form of the 2021 Stadium Championship Series. It was the first singular and weekly point series since the days of the FS1 Championship Series. This lineup featured a majority of the drivers who competed in Arlington, the only exceptions being Lindsay Wink was replaced by Lindsay Reed, the Pagli Rulos were replaced by Jamie Garner in Overboard and Cole Vernard in The Black Pearl, and Jim Collar in Avenger as opposed to his son in Axe. The tour was notable for a few reasons. One, because of how action-packed the series was, but also starting another new trend. Cola running a new body every week. Each week, Avenger ran something different than the last. Houston Week 1 was the regular scheme. Houston Weeks 2 and 3 were Avenger Fire. Orlando was the steps towing red, white, and blue Avenger from World Finals 20. Jacksonville was the scuba design, and so on and so forth. Tampa saw the debut of the Global Avenger, a brand new Avenger sponsored by the company of the same name. This beautiful sleek style has not been seen since Tampa of 2021. In addition to the new and returning schemes, the tour and year in general provided Cola with many huge wins throughout the season. In the fourth round in Houston, he won Freestyle. In Jacksonville Event 2, he won the Skills Challenge and the Overall Event Championship. And in Tampa Event 3, despite not winning any competitions, he finished consistently in all competitions to earn himself the Overall Event Championship. However, his biggest win, or should I say wins, of his 2021 season came from St. Louis, a post-championship series event that saw him for the very first time win a racing competition. That's right, in his almost 25 year long career, he had never won a Monster Jam racing competition before. St. Louis 2021 changed that, winning two out of the three racing competitions, earning those wins at St. Louis Event 2 and St. Louis Event 3. He would, however, end up finishing 7th in the series standings. He would also earn the Stadium Freestyle of the Year award for his freestyle performance in the very first show in Houston. Later that year, Cola would bring back the World Finals 11 Rat Rod body for the 2021 International Monster Truck Hall of Fame Museum show. In 2022, Team Scream was ready for yet another intense year of action. For the first time ever, all of Team Scream competed in the same points championship, that being Stadium Championship Series Yellow. 2022 also marked 25 years of Avenger, and in the spirit of 2021, he would bring out a new design almost every week. The red, white, and blue Avenger was featured in all Houston events and Anaheim events 5 and 6. The Scuba Avenger appeared in Anaheim events 3 and 4. Avenger Fire appeared at Miami, and the S10 Avenger appeared at Syracuse and Wilkes-Barre. For the final show of Stadium Championship Series Yellow, Jim Kohler brought out the Rat Rod design. Kohler's 2022 season to some felt like a disappointment, especially compared to 2021 as Kohler went winless the entire season. He did, however, finish 8th in the series standings. In true Avenger fashion, Cola unveiled yet another new scheme. This was the Jam Customs-designed Glow-in-the-Dark Avenger, 
honestly one of my favorite Avengers scheme of all time. The truck's logo features the history of Avenger unfolding throughout its classy design. Speaking of which, we mentioned that it was glow in the dark, but the fans never really had the chance to see glow in person. This photo, posted to Team Scream's social media, demonstrates the capability of this amazing scheme. Cola would once again compete in the High Jump World Championship, interestingly this time using Avenger 2 and the World Finals 18 body. Unfortunately, he once again finished in 6th place, lost in round 1 of racing, but did finish 15th in freestyle. After his freestyle run, fans got to witness the tradition of the pond jump, or in this case, the inflatable water slide dive in person once again, as Cola hilariously jumps into the small pool, cooling off after his freestyle run. The 25th anniversary scheme seen at World Finals would later be used in Cleveland, Ohio that same year. 2023 seems to be much of the same for Avenger. New schemes every week, as so far we've seen Avenger fire at Anaheim events 3 and 4, the steps towing red, white and blue Avenger in San Diego events 3 and 4, and the S10 Avenger in Houston events 1 and 2. Indianapolis did get to see the debut of the brand new Ghana Towing inspired Avenger. This Avenger was notable for being one of the few instances Avenger have strayed away from the usual S10 or Bel Air body the truck is known for, instead adopting the Chevy C10 body that Overboard has been known for. The reasoning being that Ghana Towing is owned by, you guessed it, Jamie Ghana, owner and driver of Overboard. The design is likely an Indianapolis exclusive since Ghana Towing operates exclusively in the Indiana area. But you never know what Avenger body Jim Collar will bring to your show. The upcoming World Finals will see another brand new design and it is entirely likely that if he participates in the Superstar Challenge in November, he may unveil yet another one. Over the past 26 years, Jim Collar's Avenger has become one of the most iconic independent monster trucks in the entire industry. Whether it be its signature Chevrolet bodies or its iconic World Finals paint schemes, Jim Collar clearly values the aesthetics of his truck and never seems to disappoint. The story of Avenger and Jim Collar is truly amazing. A tribute to his father's drag racing background, naming the truck after his father's car, and from being a relatively small and unknown team, to taking advantage of an opening in Monster Jam's programming and becoming one of the industry's most beloved teams. Their equipment is top notch, and even their 15 year old chassis can still compete to the highest degree of competition alongside their much newer peers. Cola's legacy has already and continues to be passed down to the next generation, with Chris Cola already in Monster Jam and recently earning his first two wins, not to mention his other sons, John Cola, who has driven his truck before, there is no doubt that Avenger will be continued to be driven from generation to generation, with the team keeping itself fresh and exciting year after year, there's no telling what will happen next. And well, that's all we have for you today. Thank you everyone all so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon with some more Monster Truck content.